Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. So today, uh, our first class of this paper class. Um, so as you all are aware, this uh, paper class series is completely free. And uh, so first we will start with the one of the easy questions that we can get marks in our paper, that is probability. Now, if you check uh, last uh, seven, eight years or 10 years, there is uh, almost uh, in every year, the probability question is there. So that is uh, a sure solid question. And then if you practice with probability, you can get good marks. Uh, you can confirm that marks in your paper. There are certain topics uh, in O level max paper that you can get uh, uh, get good marks for sure, like probability and uh, free uh, statistics and graphs. These questions you can get easily marks. Okay, so uh, without further ado, we will start our paper class discussion. I hope. Uh, most of you have already tried some questions uh, related to probability. Uh, raise your hand if you did so. If you have, uh, if you did, if you have practiced some questions related to probability within last week, uh, raise your hand. Yeah, no one is uh, raising the hand. Seems like nobody has practiced. Okay, anyway, so you can uh, take this class as opportunity to practice for this probability. Anyway, so after this session, uh, I hope majority of will be very con will be uh, more confident with probability questions. And uh, so let's start it. I hope my audio is very clear to all of you. Can any of you uh, confirm me that? You can, can drop you, a sir? message in the chat box. Uh, I want to tell you one important thing. Since I have connected to this mic, uh, I don't have any speak out. Right? Therefore, I won't be able to listen if anyone talking. So if you want to say anything, you can drop a message in the chat box. If you find difficult to uh, text in the chat box, like. It's uh, obvious, right? While you're studying this, it's difficult for you to text, right? So therefore, uh, therefore, uh, what you can do is you can drop a message in the chat box like, wanna talk, right? So then I can remove this mic and allow you to speak, right? Okay. And Athia, can you uh, rename as your full name? Because uh, in this uh, paper class group, more than 30 students have joined. There are some students with the same name. So we want to make sure that this particular student has joined. So therefore, everyone has to join this class with the uh, full name. Like for example, uh, your name and followed by father's name. Okay then, so let's start it. Let's start, uh, okay. So first I will start with question number paper 2013. Okay, so we will start with uh, 2015 paper. Okay, so here in a box, there are five bottles of fruit juice of the same type and size. So that means all the bottles are identical. There is no difference. They are same uh, size and type. Of them, two are expired and the other three are nearly expired. So two are expired and three are nearly expired. A lab assistant picks a bottle from the box randomly and without replacement, he picks another bottle randomly. Okay, so there is a box and five bottles are there, five juice bottles, and two of them are expired and three are nearly expired. 
so then uh, let's say i am that uh, lab assistant right so here i am without looking at the box randomly i take one right so and then i note it like for example if it's the uh, nearly expired so i can mark that is nearly expired and then without replacement uh, i pick the another one right okay so that is the event so the event is i take uh, randomly one bottle out of the box and note down and then again i'll take another box okay and incomplete git grid prepare to represent the sample space relevant to this random experiment is given in the figure here e1 and e2 denote the expired bottles so there are two expired bottles so one is e1 the other one is e2 and n1 n2 and n3 denote the nearly expired bottles okay so question number one indicate the sample space in the grid using the mark x okay so this is the grid diagram so in this grid diagram we can we have to mark the sample space okay okay so now uh, our main focus on this paper class is not just writing the answer everyone have to understand well and uh, gain a confidence to write these questions right so therefore first i will uh, modify the question as this so here for the first case i take a bottle and then i replace it. i randomly take a bottle out of this and then i replace it okay and then again for the second uh, picking so second attempt i take another box sorry another bottle and then no done so this is the event i have modified the event the actual question is without replacing taking another bottle but here for the purpose of explaining uh, first i take one bottle and note down and i replace it again i take another one right so let's first discuss with this and then let's mark the uh, sample space in the grid diagram and then we will write the actual answer to this problem okay so first uh, let's say in the first picking i'll take one bottle so what what are what could be the solutions so it could be either uh, there are five bottles it could be either e1 bottle or e2 bottle or n1 bottle or n2 bottle and n3 bottle either one of this uh, has to be the uh, first bottle that the lab assistant speak now you can think i am the lab assistant okay i'm picking the bottle suppose if i pick the e1 bottle let's say in my first time i randomly pick one bottle that is e1 okay and then i replace it and then if i replace that then for the second time i can pick again e1 bottle that is obvious right if i take the bottle let's say that is e1 and then i replace it and then again i randomly take then it is e1 that is possible right because i have replaced that bottle so then e2 also possible for the second attempt e3 also possible e4 also possible uh, sorry e1 e2 uh, n1 n2 n3 sorry okay uh, okay i'll explain from again let's say now i take a bottle and replace it and then again i randomly take and uh, i pick a bottle right suppose let's say in the first picking i took let's say e2 bottle so that is e2 when i pick up the bottle first let's say it is e2 and then i replace it again then five bottles will be there in the box again i randomly take one then what are the possible sol uh, pickings so first i could pick e1 bottle maybe i can take e2 bottle or n1 right or n2 or it could be n3 right suppose if i didn't replace it then e1 cannot sorry e2 cannot be a solution cannot be a uh, 
cannot pick from the uh, box. Okay. I'll explain one last time. So here, let's say there are five bottles, E1, E2, N1, N2, N3. Okay. Okay, good. So let's say uh, in the first picking, uh, I took E2. Right. I took E2 and then I replace it. If I replace it, then again in the second picking, I could pick E1 or I could take E2 or N1 or N2, N3. Right. All these are possible. Or suppose if I, in the first uh, picking, in the first picking, if I take N1, and then if I replace it, again, all this will be possible. E1 is possible, E2 possible, N1 possible, N2 possible, N3 possible. All these will be possible to pick, right? So then we can mark the sample space here. So for the first time, I can, I could have picked E2 and second time could be E1. If the first time E2, the second time could be E2. Uh, first time E2, the second time could be N1, like this. So these all possible. So all of these are possible. So here this one, in the first picking N2 bottle, second picking E1 bottle, that is also possible. N3 and E1 is possible. Here this one also possible. N3, the first picking N3 bottle, and in the second picking, it is in two bottles. That is also possible. So if N3 and N3 also possible. So all these values are possible, right? Uh, don't forget, I modified the question as I replaced the bottle after the first picking, right? So therefore, all these are possible. Okay. Uh, do you all understand this? Raise your hand if you understood. There are nine students, but I can see only five hands. Okay, good. So now here, but actually in this problem, in this problem, we are not replacing the bottle. Not we, I mean the lab assistant, right? Not replacing the bottle. Now, for example, in the first attempt, let us say the uh, assistant took E1 bottle, right? So if he didn't replace it, then in the second picking, can it be E1? It couldn't be, it can't, no? Because if he replaced that only in the second picking, we can take E1. So therefore, this point won't come. If we choose, if, we re if he didn't replace it, this point also won't come. If he pick E2 in the second picking, he can't pick E2. If we suppose if we pick N1 in the second picking, he can't pick N1. So in N2, this so therefore these diagonal values won't come. Right? Okay. Now I'll tell you how to mark this in the exam during the exam. Now you know this is the sample space. You know this is the sample space. You know all these points will come except these diagonal points. Right? Except these diagonal points. But in exam now. Uh, let's say that you are going to mark the sample space, then you know you will mark like this, right? So here this one comes, so this, this, this. So this will come, this one come, this will come. So you will mark like this. Uh, so this one come. So this will come. Your mark will like this. this one comes, so this one comes, this one comes. Okay, right. So this is the answer, uh, the sample space according to this event because the bottle is not replaced. Now in exam, when you're going to draw, mark this, you should do like this. Because if you did like this way, the speed is small. I mean, rather what you can do is you can, mark with everything with the pencil so you mark every point first then you can mark faster 
without avoiding the diagonal point, if you mark all the points, then you can mark past the And then what you can do is take the erase and erase this diagonal. That way also, can, if, you, if, you, if you do that way, that is more uh, efficient way. You can do it quickly, right? Okay, so this is the sample space. Okay, do you all understand this? Okay. Good. So if you have marked the sample space like this, then you will get uh, marks. And uh, the next question. <coughs> Okay, the assistant replaces both bottles in the box. After that, a researcher picks a bottle randomly from the same box and tests the juice in it for the presence of a certain bacteria. Okay, so after this event experiment is done, uh, assistant replaces both the bottles inside the box and then researcher checks for uh, certain bacteria. An incomplete tree diagram relevant to this random experiment is shown in the figure below, where E denotes the bottle being expired, N denotes the bottle being nearly expired, B denotes presence of the bacteria, so B dash denotes the absence of bacteria. Okay, write down the relevant probabilities in the tree diagram. Okay, so here they have given incomplete tree diagram. So then you have to complete this. Okay, so now for example, let us say uh, tossing a coin. So there are only two solutions, head or tail. The probability of being head is one out of two, right? It is one outcome of two possibilities, one out of two. Head is one out of two. Then tail, that is also one out of two. So this one actually tail we can calculate from uh, if it's certain one, one minus the probability half, then we get one minus half, so one over one minus one two. So LCM is two, so two minus one. So it is also one half, right? Okay, so now I'll give another example. Let's say uh, the probability of the probability of me playing in Sri Lanka cricket team me playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is let's say that probability is very high because I am good at school cricket so let's say that is 9 out of 10 right the probability of me playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is 9 out of 10 then I'll ask you one question what is the probability so this is will be 0.9 so what is the probability that I may not play in Sri Lanka team? The probability of me playing in Sri Lanka team is 9 out of 10. Then probability of me not playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is, what is it? Okay, you can let me know in the answers in the chat box. Okay, I'm getting correct answers. Good. The probability of me playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is 9 out of 10. Then what is the probability that me not playing in Sri Lanka cricket team? Yes, correct. I'm expecting the answers from uh, more students. So far, I got only three answers out of eight students here. And all three answers are correct. Yeah. So the uh, probability of me not playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is one out of 10. 
1 out of 10, which is 0 0.1. So likewise, the probability of, so there are only two outcomes, E or N. So in that bottle, there are two outcomes is there. So either expired bottle or nearly expired bottle. So if the probability of uh, getting expired bottles, now that is obvious, now there are only two expired bottles out of five. So that is two out of five. Therefore, uh, not probability of not expired bottle is three out of five. Okay. Now let me know, do you all understand this? If you understand this part, then I can do the rest of this very faster. I mean, not very fast, uh, fast. Okay. Okay, good. If anyone didn't understand, please let me know because my priority here is everyone should understand. Everyone has to get good grades in uh, your OLL Max paper. And don't feel like this is a typical classroom, school classroom. Like rather you can consider this as a club or like a friendly gathering. If you have anything you can speak up and not, it's totally fine, right? We will have our class in very friendly mood, right? And I like to be friendly. I like to, uh, yeah, that's what I really like. I like to meet people who are very friendly and nice. Okay, so here, uh, right. So the probability of expect uh, uh, expired picking uh, expired bottle is two out of five. Therefore, nearly expired is three out of five. And then uh, suppose if expired is picked up, the probability of uh, having a bacteria containing a bacteria of one over four. Therefore, not having a bacteria will be three out of four. If it's nearly expired, if it's nearly expired, then uh, there is a high chance of having no bacteria. Okay. Or you can say less. Now, okay, here this is 19 over 20. Therefore, this one will be 1 over 20. So here 3 over 5. This is 1 over 4. Therefore, this 3 over 4. This 19 over 20, therefore this is 1 over 20. All right. So you can see that the containing a bacteria in the expired one has 1 over 4 probability. But having a bacteria in the nearly expired one is 1 over 20, which is less than the pre this one. That is obvious now. If it's uh, expired, then it has a large probability of last chance of having a bacteria. If it's nearly expired, it has a lesser probability of having a bacteria. Okay. And find the probability that the juice in the bottle pick contains the bacteria. Juice in the bottle pick contains a bacteria. Okay. So you want to find the probability of having a bacteria. So that is this even and this even. So the probability of this even, that means expired and having a bacteria. The bottle is picked up expired and contains bacteria. So the probability of this one is two out of five, two out of five into one out of four into one out of four. So therefore two into one. Uh, okay, here we can simplify you now here four is 2 into 2, no? So here 2 into 1 and 2 into 2. So 1 into 1 is 1, 5 into 2 is 10, 1 out of 10. And the pro we'll get the probability of this even. Uh, nearly expired bottle and contains a bacteria. So that is 3 out of 5 into uh, 1 out of 20. So therefore, this will be 3 into 1 is 3, 5 into 20 is 100. So, but now we want the probability that the juice in the bottle pick contains the bacteria. Juice in the bottle 
contains the bacteria. It doesn't say uh, the juice in the expired bottle being bacteria. If that was the case, then answer will be this. If the question is what is the probability that the juice in the nearly expired bottle has a bacteria, then this is the case. But they doesn't uh, specify this or this. Therefore, it can include both. So therefore, you have to find the probability of both the events of this and this. Therefore, you have to add these two probabilities. So therefore, the answer is 1 over 10 plus 3 over 100. So the LCM, you know, if you want to add two fractions, the denominators has to be same. If the denominators are not same, we can equate it by finding the LCM and uh, turning into uh, equivalent fractions. So the here LCM is 100, 10 and 100, uh, 100 LCM is 100. Therefore, now you can write the equivalent fraction for this as by multiplying here by 10 and the numerator also by 10. So then here we get 10 over 100 plus 3 over 100. Now you can see the denominators are equal. Therefore, you can take the common denominator 100 and 10 plus 3. So therefore, answer is 13 over 100. So the probability of uh, probability that the juice in the bottle pick contains the bacteria is 13 over 100. Okay, I hope this uh, question is clear to all of you. Uh, I didn't understand the second one. Second one, yeah. Okay, so here, uh, this 1 over 20 comes because here 19 over 20, no, right? Similar to this, 2 over 5, therefore, uh, so me playing in Sri Lanka cricket team is uh, 9 out of 10. Therefore, not playing in the Sri Lanka team, probability of me not playing in the Sri Lanka cricket team is 1 out of 10, right? Suppose I am uh, going to space, the probability of me going to space is, let's say, 3 out of 10. Then the probability of me not going to space is, it's a complement, so 7 out of 10. Similarly, this one is the complement of this. Therefore, it has to be 1 out of 20. So that one we can, this one we can calculate as, 1 minus 19 over 20. So then if you simplify this, it will be 20 is the LCM. So here 20 minus 19. So here 1 over 20. Okay. So therefore this one is 1 over 20. So the probability of uh, nearly expired bottle contains bacteria is 3 out of 5 into 1 out of 20, so 3 out of 100. Therefore, probability of uh, juice bottle contains a bacteria, then this and this, so you had to add these to 1 over 10 and 3 over 100. So if you simplify, 13 over 100 comes. Is it clear now? Okay. So if you check, this is the basic structure of uh, probability questions. So if you practice for these probability questions, you can clearly, easily get marks in your exam paper. So let's uh, move on to the next question. Okay, so this time I give you a couple of minutes to carry out this question. So because this time you are going to do this question and then I'll uh, start the discussion, okay?
Okay, so uh, there are three red tennis balls and one green tennis ball in a box. A ball is drawn from the box, its color is recorded and it's put back. So we replace the ball. A ball is drawn from the box again and its color is also recorded. The balls are drawn randomly. Okay. Roman number one, indicate the relevant sample space in the given grid using the marks X. R1, R2, R3 represents the red, red balls and G represents the green balls. So then since here the ball is being uh, replaced, it is put back. Therefore, all the values will come. Right. So this is the sample space then. Okay. Indicate the event of drawing the green ball at least once. Yeah, at least once by encircling it, by encircling it in the grid and write down its probability. And write down its probability. Okay, so here at least once. Now here uh, green. Now here if you consider this one, uh, this even. So if I consider this even. Are we picking a green ball? No. For the first row, it is R1 ball. In the second row, the same R1 ball. If I consider this one, so in the first row, R2 ball, and second row, it's R3 ball. So this is also not a green, right? So, but if I consider here, in the first one, green, and second one, R1. So that is one uh, option, no? because at least once, so if you pick at least one green ball, so that event is correct. So then this will come and this, okay. And this also green. And here, this one is both the times green. First draw also green, second draw also green. So at least once we picked up green, so that means that is also correct. This is correct, this is correct, this is correct. So we want to encircle those uh, encircle those uh, events. So we can encircle it like this. Okay. So if you draw like this, you can encircle like this, you will get the marks. Okay. And write down its probability. So probability here, Probability of, let's say, this event. Let's say probability of uh, this event I take consider as A, right? So probability of A. So A is uh, picking a green ball at least once. A is picking a green ball, green ball at least once. At least once picking a green ball at least once. So this PA, uh, the probability of A, that means probability of picking a green ball at least once. So this will be, how do we read this? Probability of A. Or A is we know picking a green, the event A is picking a green ball at least once. Therefore we can read this as probability of picking a green ball at least once is equals to number of A, and number of the elements in the sample space. Number of elements in A and number of elements in sample space. So in A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In A is seven. And in S is four into four, 16. So seven out of 16, that's the probability of picking a green ball at least once. Okay, do you all understand this? Uh, G and G, that means in the, here, the, in the, this one, uh, someone asking about this uh, point. So in the first row, picking the green ball and you put that. And again in the second, uh, draw you pick the same green ball so 
this is includes this will come in the event of at least once if you pick at least once then that event also come no okay if you if it's at least once then it doesn't give a restriction about you can't pick the ball for two times if you pick up at least once then it will that event will come Now, for example, let's say uh, you are playing cricket. Okay, there are six balls in a over, right? So the probability of uh, or as even event of you are playing, you are hitting a four at least once will come if you play four in the next ball also. You understand? So in the first draw, you pick the green ball and second draw, so you pick the green ball. So at least once you have picked the green ball, you know, so that even will come. Okay. So the probability of picking a green ball at least once is 7 out of 16. Okay. Okay, complete the following three diagrams relevant to this random experiment. Okay. Okay, so here, uh, sorry. And it says two of the three red balls are each marked with the letter X. And the remaining red ball and the green ball are each marked with the letter Y. Since all the balls are identical, right? So it is like two red uh, X balls are there and two Y balls are there. Uh, like four balls are identical, only the difference is color in it previously. So, but uh, if we consider like uh, close the eyes and just check, try to pick the red ball, all the balls are identical, right? So now there are two uh, X, two balls marked with letter X and two balls marked with letter Y. Suppose that the letter mark on the ball was also recorded in each of the above drawings. Okay. Complete the following D diagram relevant to random experiment. So first draw. The probability of drawing a Y ball is 1 out of 2. That is true now because there are two balls. Uh, so the probability of Y, PY, is equal to NY over NS. So number of Y balls is uh, two, number of balls in the sum, this is four, therefore two out of four, right? So therefore two out of four, if you simplify it to be one out of two, right? So there are two Y balls out of four balls. So therefore probability is one half, okay? So then, the probability of X also will be one half because there are two balls with mark X out of four. So two out of four is one half. And here also the same because you replace the ball. So therefore it will be one half here, one half here Y, here X, here Y. Again, this is one half, one half. Complete the following tape diagram relevant to this random experiment. Okay. So here it's one half, one half, right? Because the ball is being replaced. So therefore, probability of getting a letter, its letter is one half. Probability of picking a Y letter is one half. Okay. If we didn't replace the ball, then the problem will be complicated, no? Now, suppose if we didn't replace the ball, okay, uh, I will ex uh, explain that scenario here. If we didn't replace the ball, so in the first draw, it doesn't change, right? So, 
so in the first draw the probability of drawing a x ball also one half y is also one half two out of four but suppose in the first row if you draw x then uh, so i'll mark one two three four so x x y y so these are in the box okay suppose if you draw x so let's say you pick so x means one of these two balls and let's say you pick this ball so no longer that ball will be there in the box therefore then again drawing the x ball for the second time is one out of three then it will be here one out of three y is two out of three it will be two out of three. and suppose if you pick y first so then probability of picking y will be one out of three because if you take one out from the box then and if you didn't replace then only one y ball will be there so one out of three and this is two out of three do you understand this is if we didn't replace yes okay Okay, find the probability of drawing balls marked with the same letter on both occasions. Same letter on both occasions. If you want to find the probability of picking the same letter with both occasions. I'll mark this first half here. Half here. This is y. This is also half. Half x. Half. So probability of picking the uh, same letter in both occasions. So in first row, if you pick X, second row also you have to pick X. Therefore, this even, the probability of this even is one half into okay, one half into one half. And in the first row, if you pick Y, second row also you pick Y. So this even, the probability of this even is one half into one half. So in the question, they are not asking. Uh, in both occasions, picking the same letter X. They don't ask that. And in both occasions, picking the same letter Y. No, not like. In both occasions, picking the balls with the same letter. So therefore, this if you pick this, this, this even, and if you pick this, and then next time this this even. The probability of these two events then therefore uh, the total probability is one half into one half plus you add these to this one and this one you add one half into one half so therefore here 104 plus 104 so therefore 4 1 plus 1 so it will be 2 over 4 so therefore one half so probability is one out of two. So the probability of is uh, one out of two. Is that clear, everyone? Is it clear? Raise your hand if you understand. Okay, good. So find the probability uh, of drawing balls marked with the same letter on both occasions is we found that to be one half. Okay. State with reasons whether there is a greater probability of drawing balls marked with the same letter on both occasions or drawing the green ball at least once so the drawing green ball at least once we found that probability is earlier 7 out of 16 but this one has a probability of 1 out of 2 we just calculated now you want to state with the reason which one is greater probability so one half is greater or 
one half is greater or seven out of sixteen is greater. So it's difficult to compare if uh, we have different denominators, right? Now, for example, uh, you can compare these. Like, uh, for example, let's say uh, three out of four, two out of four, one out of four. Like, uh, if you have such fractions, then it is easy to compare, right? Then here, what it is like? You take uh, one apple and divide into four, and two apple you divide into four, three apple you divide into four. Then it is easy to compare. So this one is bigger. Dividing four into, if you take one apple and divide into four, you get a quarter. But if you take three apples and divide into four, you get a bigger piece, no? Right. So therefore, this is bigger. Right. But here. Uh, now we want to compare these two fractions. What we can do is uh, here uh, we can find the LCM of these two, 2 and 16. So 2 and 16 LCM is 16. So in order to make it 16, we can multiply this by 8. So here also we had to multiply by 8. So then this will, will be 8 over 16 and then 7 over 16. So now we can compare this now. Now it's very clear 8 over 16 is greater than 7 over 16. So 8 over 16 is what it is from here. Drawing balls marked with same letter on both occasions. So probability of probability of probability probability of you had to write this entire thing. Okay. You have to write this entire thing here. The probability of uh, wait, I'll mark that from a different color. Okay. Probability of drawing balls marked with the same letter both occasions greater than, and then you write this probability of probability of drawing the green ball at least once right did you understand you have to compare the probability values and then you can state this one has a higher probability than this Okay, uh, if anyone have any questions, you may ask now. Okay. Okay, now I'm uh, going to do something uh, related to sets. Okay. Let's briefly discuss about sets. Now, for example, for example, uh, let's say I consider the universal set as numbers from 1 to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right now universal set means you will discuss this entire problem within that set one now for example i can take a set as universal set as cats in the world cats in the world okay so that's my set so that means I only talk about cats only, not dogs, not humans, not horses, not any other aliens, right? Only in this universal set, I'm going to talk about sets. And then I take 
a set A as uh, cats in my home. Cats in my home, right? Then uh, let's say that is the set A. The set A is cats in my home. Then the complement set A dash is the cats that are not in my home, right? That cats that are not in my home. Okay. That's about the complement because uh, today we will discuss briefly about uh, this set and uh, uh, intersection set and then universal set. Okay, because we are we it is related to uh, probability, right? Because yeah, we will start so you will understand uh, what we are going to do today on this part. Okay, so and here I'll consider. Okay, by the way, I'll ask you a question. How many methods are there to represent a set? You can put your answers in the chat box. How many methods are there to write, represent a set? Please put your answers in the chat box. Okay, I got a correct answer. Yeah, Venn diagram is also a method of representing a set. But my question is, how many methods are there to represent a set? You can say one or two or three or four or five, like the answer. You have to say how many methods are there. Please, everyone has to give your answers. Doesn't matter if it gets wrong or right. Because when you answer only, then I will be able to understand your level of your knowledge in that particular subject, in that particular lesson. Right? If you didn't answer, if you didn't respond, then I won't be able to understand your level of understanding of that lesson. So it's okay to be wrong, but you had to give your answer. So then only I can understand about each and every student. Okay, so in actually there are four methods to represent a set. There are four methods. So first method is, what is the first method? Descriptive method. You can describe the set, descriptive method. Descriptive method. And second method is listing the elements. You list the elements in the set. Listing the elements. So listing the elements. And third method you study in grade nine, Venn diagram. And fourth method you study in grade 10, set builder method now for example this same this set uh, so this set actually this the set okay one two three four five six this set is uh, represent in the set builder method sorry listing the elements method this set is given here in the listing the elements method okay so i can give this a, a symbol a name that is epsilon okay that's a symbol so this symbol represents this set so the descriptive method numbers from 1 to 10 uh, i can say not numbers because 1.5 is not there and 1.5 is also number so integers from 1 to 10 so descriptive method, how can I write this? Integers from integers from 1 to 10. So now here, this is the descriptive method. So in descriptive method, you can either put a bracket, curly brackets or not. Totally fine. If you put here, this is all again the set. Listing the elements, so that is here. Uh, it's there. 
and then Venn diagram. So you draw a Venn diagram and then mark all the values there. So Venn diagram, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this Venn diagram. So here this is equals to epsilon, and here you mark this as epsilon. And then set builder method. Set builder method, you take this, say this equals to x, where x is an element from integers and uh, x is less than or equal to 10. If I put here integers, then the less than or equal, then minus value also come, therefore I only put here plus. So this is four methods of representing the same set. So there are four methods to represent a set. So these are the four methods. First one is this uh, descriptive method. You can describe the set. So now another way, uh, black color cats in the world. So in this set, include all the black color cats in the world, listing the elements. So you list the elements, right? So you take all the cats and keep in arrange in a list. You arrange in a list. So one cat after the other. And when diagram. So you take all black color cats and put inside this uh, circle. And set builder method. Again, you can construct a set builder method. Now for this, uh, by the way, for the pictures, we can't represent set builder methods. Usually set builder methods are for numbers and related things, okay? Okay, so these are the four methods of set, uh, representing a set. Okay, if, if you want, you can take a screenshot. Then I'm going to erase this. So, okay, so under this uh, universal set, I consider the first example. In the first example, let's say I have a set A. So A is, uh, I'll take uh, odd numbers, odd numbers, odd numbers from one to 10. And B I take as even numbers, even numbers, from 1 to 10. Uh, here I write even numbers um, between between 1 to 10. Even numbers between 1 to 10. Okay. So first question, uh, represent this information in a Venn diagram represent this information in a Venn diagram. Okay, I'll give you a minute, you can do this.
Okay, so I will start. It will be easy so if we write these sets uh, first as listing the elements. So I take set A. So set A is odd numbers from 1 to 10. So what are the odd numbers from 1 to 10? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so those are odd numbers from 1 to 10. And set B is so here this is also a form of uh, representing a set descriptive method right so here i have written set a as in this descriptive method odd numbers from one to ten so that one i'm writing in the listing the elements and then b even numbers from one uh, between one to ten okay so even numbers between one to ten two four six eight okay now i ask you a question everyone has to respond okay uh, tell me the set b i have written in the listing method is it correct or wrong is it correct or wrong so please uh, the question is is it correct if it's correct yes if not say no because here i'm trying to teach you one thing Okay, so I get mixed answers. Uh, few students say it's wrong and the majority say it's yes. Actually, this is wrong because here it says between 1 to 10. When it says between 1 to 10, then you can't include 1 and 10. Therefore, you can't include 10 here. Understood? It says between. When it says between, you can't include 1 and 10, right? If it's 1 to 10, then you can include 1 and 10 depending on the nature. But here it says between, therefore uh, we can't take 1 to 10. We can't write 10 here. Now in the previous one, it says from 1 to 10. When it says from 1 to 10, then we can include 1 and 10. Okay, so here odd one is odd number, so we can write one here. Okay, so there is a difference between from one to ten and between one to ten. Okay, I hope it's clear to everyone now. Okay, right. So then the next thing you have to check is now after writing this. Uh, in the listing elements method, you have to check whether there are there any common elements in both sets. In the set A and set B, are there any common elements? One is here, but it's not in B. Three is in A, but not in B. It's a, five is in A, not in B. Two is in B, but not in A. So there are no any common elements. Therefore, when you are drawing the Venn diagram, you have to draw the circles without any overlap cannot overlap so we say these two events a and b are mutually exclusive the event a and b and mutually exclusive events they ha don't have any they don't share any common elements therefore it is known as Mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. So these words are not important when talking about probability. Right? Okay, so here this is let's say set A and this is B. And this is the universal set. And let's down write down the elements one three five seven nine one three five seven nine b is two four six eight two four six eight two four six eight okay and then we know in universal set one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh we didn't write anywhere ten here 
one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 is not, any, uh, not inside A and B, therefore it is somewhere outside A and B. But it is inside the universal set. Okay. Now, that is okay. And the next thing that we are going to talk about, number of elements and then uh, uh, complement set and intersection, universal set, those things. Okay, so here first let's consider A intersection B. This is known as A intersection B. So what is A intersection B here? So A intersection B, if you write in the listing elements, there are no any A uh, elements. So you write like this or this is equal to the null set. Null set, a set where there is no any elements. We call this null set. So A intersection B is nothing. It's a null set. A set with no elements. So for example, the number of romantic movies acted by Rimas. So it is null set. Or uh, number of um, sixes uh, I played in T20 World Cup. Number of sixes I played in T20 World Cup. That is also an asset. Okay. Number of good presidents in Sri Lanka. That is also an asset, right? Can someone confirm? Is it an asset or not? There might be some good presidents in our history, right? Okay, let's uh, remove that from our uh, argument. Uh, okay, no discussion about that. Okay. Anyway, so an asset is a set where there is no any element. And then A union B, A union B, then you have to write all the elements in set A and set B. So then we can start one, two, three, four, five, six to nine. Yeah, there are no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, A union B. And uh, uh, another one, A complement. Complement of A. Complement of A means now, for example, uh, let's I, for example, take this uh, cat example. So, let's say universal set is cats, and then I take A as the cats in my home. Then the complement of that will be cats that are not uh, in my home. Uh, one is there in B, no? Yeah. I think is it uh, the one should also not be coming, right? One should comes, right? Because one is there in set A, no? Okay. So universal set means all the elements in set A and B together. You take everything. Okay. Now complement set means, now for example, if I say uh, A is the set of uh, I take A as the set uh, which describes cats in my home. Therefore, complements is uh, all the cats except the cats which are in my home, right? So here, then complement of A. So without these uh, elements, one, three, five, seven, nine, you had to write other elements in the universal set. Two, four, two, four, six, eight, ten. And then complement of B, we can write complement of B. Complement of B. Complement of B is uh, all other elements except B. Therefore, here 1, 3, 9, 7, 5, 10. 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. Because 10 also not inside D. 10. Okay. And then now another one I'll explain. Uh, now, for example, uh, A intersection B complement. So intersection B complement. A intersection B complement. So you have to check the common elements in 
set A and B complement. So one three five seven nine. So therefore, it will be one three five seven nine. Five seven nine. Ten one come because ten is not there in the set A. You had to write the common elements in both A and B dash. That means a complement of B. Okay, so far, do you have any questions or anything that you didn't understand? Here in the it way, Solomon Bro. All clear, right? Okay. Right. Now the next thing, uh, the number of elements in each set. Number of elements in each set. Now, for example, if I say n a, this means number of elements in set a. So let's start with the universal set first. Um, so number of elements in universal set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten. And n a tell me the answer for this what is n a is equals to hurry up hurry up put in the chat box yes good abda so it's five one two three four five n a is five n b n b one two three four four n N, 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 let's say uh, A intersection B, A intersection B. So what is A intersection B? This one. Put your answers in the chat box. Hurry up, guys. Did you have dinner? Yes, zero. I'm getting the correct answers. Did you have dinner? Seems like no one had dinner. Okay. Uh, you should have your dinner on time. Okay, guys. Now it's 10, 19. Don't stay uh, with, with empty stomach. Okay. Someone's uh, on process. Okay. Have it. Okay. And you should give the 100% focus to the class. Okay. Hi. By the way, go over the camera. Say Atirishishtai, sir. Okay, fine. So N A intersection B is zero. Uh, so N A union B. N. Thaniyama kya hoat rasai ita mai. Abhita D la khanda. N A union B. So number of elements in this set. A union B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. Easy. Okay, num N B dash. In B dash. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. And in uh, A intersection B dash. A intersection B dash. In A intersection B dash. What is the answer? Count. I'm not good at counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it seven? In A intersection B dash? Five. Okay, five. Okay, so far so good, right? And now you know the sets, and now you know how to find the number of elements. Okay, uh, so then now we come to probability. Unability, the liability, name probability. So now we come to probability. Probability, I'll take a black color. Okay, so probability of even, let's say even E. Probability of even E is defined as number of elements in the event E divided by total number of events. So, universes, number of elements in the universes or sample space. So, you write universes at all the sample space. You can write S here. 
so since we are talking about this sets so if to this particular question i can write this the definition of p of e is equals to uh, here i write this uh, properly because uh, e and epsilon both looks close the same no so i'll this curly okay three if you inverted okay so this is the probability of even e probability of even e is number of elements in even e divided by total uh, number of elements okay eto kora lamai ne after then api karamu minna probability tika hoyamu ama hoyanne oyala thuma hoyanne one you guys have to find the probability so first find the probability of uh probability of this color is not nice it's more to white color uh, white color can uh we can take pink pink is not visible at is it visible okay fine let's do with pink okay i need to find space yeah okay all uh, right 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 so here tell me what is the probability of a now for example let's say uh, the probability of a is like there there is a box there are 10 cards 1 2 3 4 all are identical cards each mark 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so a is what a is odd numbers from 1 to 10 so then uh probability of a means when you randomly take one card from that box what is the probability that the card is a odd number from 1 to 10 what is the probability that the card is an odd number from 1 to 10 so that is a number of elements in a over in epsilon in a is 5 in epsilon 10 so 5 over 10 is 1 half okay 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 so the remain one you had find good uh, find the probability of b find the probability of a intersection b uh, i'll give put the question numbers then only you can give the answers with putting the question number right uh, Okay, so here I'll 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 take some space uh, here. So I know the universal set, uh, so it's it's there in my head. So I'll write the question numbers. So you had to write, give me the answers. So I put question number one. One is probability of B. Two. probability of a intersection b 3 probability of a union b 4 probability of p uh, what else we have b dash 5 probability of a intersection b dash uh six one i give something new you had probability of a union b and its complement okay write the write the answers so first you had to do the problem in your book once you done with all the questions you can put in one message one answer is this two answer is this three answer is this four answer is this if you don't know the answer for five you can keep a space six answers give the answers
-hmm. Okay, it's uh, for me it's confusing to check the answers like the names all jumbled, the answers jumbled. So first let's do like this. I'll ask what is the answer for the first one. Then each of you can give the answers. Okay, that's where we'll do it. It's, uh, easy and convenient. Okay, so first one over two, two over five. Okay, so what is the answer for the first one, everyone? The probability of B. That means the probability of getting an even number uh between one to ten probability of getting a getting an even number between one to ten so we can see there are four elements in b so four divided by ten therefore two divided by five so i'm getting the correct answers applause for everyone very good right uh second one p a intersection b p a intersection b A intersection B. Yes, correct. Correct. By the way, 0 divided by 10, no need to put that uh, 0 divided by 10 because 0 divided by any number is 0. So you can write 0. Okay. So you just write 0. Good. Okay, so what is the probability of uh, third one? Probability of A union B. Probability of A union B. Each of you have to give your answers, please. Probability of A union B. Okay, nine out of ten because in A union B there are nine elements and then out of ten, right? So A union B here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of ten. So therefore, probability of A union B is nine out of ten. Probability of B dash. Probability of B dash. That means the probability of not being an even number between 1 to 10. Probability of not being an even number between 1 to 10. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, sorry, B dash here, 10, 1, come, no? Uh, B dash, yes. Uh, for B dash, it will come because, yeah, it's, been, yes. The probability of being an even number between 1 to 10. So this is current. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 out of uh, 10. So the answer is 6 out of 10. Let's see how many of you have got the correct answer. 3 over 5, 3 over 5, 10, 6 over 10, 6 over 10, 6 over 10. Very good. Very brilliant. Okay, and then uh, probability of A intersection B dash. Fifth one, probability of A intersection B dash. So one, two, three, four, five elements are there, divide by 10, five out of 10. So yes, five out of 10 or one out of two. Very good, give it up, very good, I'm so happy. Sixth one, probability of, now this one, uh, let's see who has done correct. Probability of A union B, it's complement. Probability of A union B, it's complement. Wow, I'm getting the correct answers. Very happy. Yes. So we know A union B uh, is this. Okay, A union B is this, and its complement means A union B complement is only 10 will come. So therefore, only one. So one divided by 10 is the answer probability. Okay. So far, so good.
okay and there is one more theory uh, two theories uh, three things i want to explain you regarding probability there are three things i need to explain you regarding the probability okay so i will clean this here first While I'm cleaning this, someone can sing a song. It's totally fine. Because after this class, it will be a bedtime for the majority. So someone can sing so that we will get sleepy. Yeah, I know I'm a good singer. That's why I can't sing. Uh, someone who is bad singer only should sing so that we all feel sleepy. So right after this class, we can go and sleep peacefully. Okay, so I think uh, we are time to sleep now. I mean, wind up the class 10.30 past, but I'm okay to continue the class if you all are okay. Otherwise, we can conclude and in the next class, we can discuss further. Uh, I need your response, guys. Uh, do I need to continue or let's wind up the class? I'm okay with anything. Okay, then you sing. I'll wind up the class. Okay, so most of you want to wind up the class. Good. So please refer this note at least once and then try the other questions. Uh, other past paper questions and if you find anything difficult you can contact me anytime uh, you can send the question right uh, but most of the time i'm busy because now for example today also from morning 9 onwards i'm doing classes from morning 9 to 1 30 i did uh, a seminar english medium in that is from frequency distribution and then uh, 2 to 5 30 uh, sing for Singha medium and then from 6 to 8 30 individual class and right after that i still didn't remove uh, my clothes and all with the same I address from morning i'm there so i also feel very tired and uh, i uh, thank you guys but still i'm okay if you all want to continue the class but uh, most of you want to wind up the session so we'll do that Okay, then uh, if you have any questions, you may ask. And also I need uh, some feedbacks regarding the time. Is this, is this time is okay, 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Because this is the only time possible for me. Uh, this time also I hardly found. Okay, if you have any concerns uh, regarding our class, you have to use whiteboard, any concerns if you have. Please, you can let me know through uh, in the chat box. Can't you change the day? Uh, day I can possible only uh, Tuesdays because in Tuesdays for grade 10 paper class I'm doing, but uh, in the group more than 20 students joined, but uh, in the last two class only three, four students are joining. So then I can consider that and change with the uh, change with to the Tuesday. If you are okay, I can make it to Tuesday. Uh, let me know if uh, any concerns are there. You can uh, text me through WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, or else I can uh, allow texting in the group so that you can uh, um, put your comments in the group so that it will be this uh, can be discussed among everyone. Right. Okay. Uh, then uh, good night. Sweet dreams. Sleep well. Hope you will do some probability questions on your dream. Good night. Bye. Welcome. Good night.